All right, everybody, it's me, Roku, back with more League of Legends content. And in this video, we've got a brand new account. This is an account that I just made on the North American server. I played the tutorial and did nothing else with it because I wanted to make a guide video on these settings. Nobody really talks about the settings when it comes to getting better at the game, but I feel like this should really be the first step because if you have a bunch of settings enabled that make the game more difficult for you to play for no reason, you really are gonna struggle by no fault of your own, okay? You have to make sure that the game is tailored to how you want to play it, okay? So yeah, I'm gonna go through every single one of these categories and talk about the ideal settings and the typical way the best players have things set up. So yeah, let's just get right into it. <clears throat> First up, I'm gonna start off with the hotkey section up to down, and we're gonna talk about these hotkeys primarily, okay? So before I get into what you should have here, let's talk about the different types of casts. There are three different types of like ability casts, okay? Normal casts, quick casts, and quick casts with indicators right here, okay? Now, what's a normal cast? A normal cast is when you press an ability, it activates the indicator, and then you have to click with your mouse to cast the ability, okay? This is by far the slowest way to cast your abilities, and I definitely do not recommend doing this at all, okay? You mostly want to stay on quick cast instead of normal cast, even for abilities you wanna aim. So don't ever normal cast anything. You wanna click quick cast all, so that everything is as fast as it possibly can be. Now, by default, everything is set to quick cast with indicator. Now, what is quick cast with indicator? Quick cast with indicator is when you hold the ability, it shows the indicator and it only casts the ability when you let go of the key, okay? Now that is two inputs, key in, key out, okay? Whereas with a normal quick cast, you don't get the indicator, key in and it casts the ability, okay? And I, I hope I don't have to explain why this is faster, but you're literally shaving off like 10, 20, 50 milliseconds off of just clicking, clicking this checkbox right here, okay? You do not want to play with indicators when you're playing like with your normal abilities because a lot of like champions, especially in the top lane, are very much reliant on these tiny micro movements and reaction based abilities. So you don't want to basically delay your own reflexes for no reason, right? So play on quick cast for everything. Now, I will admit there are some abilities where the indicator is kind of useful. So what most players do who've thought about this is they basically bind the quick cast with indicator to basically work with shift. So we're gonna unbind all these quick casts, okay? Okay, then we're gonna bind these to shift Q, shift W, shift E, and shift R, okay? So now when we press E normally, it's just a normal pull, but when we want to do like a bit of a aimed thing, we want to aim this, we can hold shift, press E, and then it will cast it when it lets go, okay? This is really useful for when you're trying to land like a Nidalee Spear or something that you kind of have to aim a bit more trickily with, but yeah. So if you really want these indicators for some occasions, you can just set them up like so. Self-cast, quick cast, you don't really need to worry about these things because it's basically just targeting the ability on yourself like a heal or something, but like most champions don't even have this, so you don't have to worry about the self-cast at all. Now here is a big thing, and <sighs> Jesus. Most players aren't even aware of this, but the default game has it bound so that you can level up your abilities without having to click them. So most normal players, will click here and level up one by one, but that is not useful at all because if you're in the middle of lane, in the middle of a, like a combat situation, you wanna get that level up power spike as soon as possible and wanna level up using your hotkeys. The hot, default hotkey of control and then the ability is good enough. You don't have to change this. So control E, boom, control E, boom, okay? So when you just get level two from that one minion, control E and then kill the enemy instead of bumbling around trying to click, you know, just, Use the smart way, not the difficult way. Okay, that is pretty much it for this section. Um, these are just okay by themselves. Oh yeah, target champions only. Okay, so now this is quite an important thing because target champions only is our way of making sure that we don't accidentally hit minions, okay? So I'm gonna bind this to C for now, okay? Just for the sake of like showing it. And you can bind it to whatever key you want. So I need some minions here, so let me just uh, get them. Okay, let's just go mid then. All right, 
So, what does target champions only do? Now, I've bound my target champions only to C, and when I press it, you can see that my cursor has this red sort of crystal in the middle of it, right? What this does is that your right clicks, your auto attacks, can no longer target anything else except champions. So look, normally you can attack this cannon, but now with target champions only, we just walk right through them. This is also how, you know, this works on like in, uh, gromps and stuff too, like jungle camps as well. So look, can't target them, can't target anything except actual champions, okay? So this is a very important key to have somewhere under your hand. Okay, something that you can quickly access because you really don't want to accidentally auto attack minions in the middle of a fight. This happens countless times. It happens to everyone. But the way to eliminate this is to make sure that you have it under your hand in a place where you can quickly access it. Right now, you can make this a toggle. Okay, right here, there's three target champions only as a toggle. So when you press the button that you bound, you don't have to hold it for it to like stay on target champions only okay so now i only press c once and it's in c again and then it's out of target champions only okay but if you disable this you have to hold your bounded key in order to get the target champions only sort of effect okay so yeah that is another very important bind that i heavily recommend everybody to set up okay next items you don't really need to do much here it's basically just the same stuff with a quick cast and normal cast all of that but it's better to have everything in quick cast on your items as well now um attack move what is attack move attack move i'll bind it to space for now attack move is basically like the key you press when you want to hit something that's like like okay how do i explain this so let me put in an enemy target down here okay let's say that my enemy walked into this bush okay so the time it takes for me to get into that bush and hit them, I'm in this bush, oh, and I click on them, right? That's a, there's a bit of a delay when it comes to that, right? We want to make sure we hit the target as soon as we get into the bush. How do you do this? With attack move. So instead of doing right click, I do attack move. And Darius will automatically attack the target that is inside that bush without me having to click on them. This is very useful for when you're fighting up against vis tricky vision situations like this, okay? Just press attack move into there and your character will automatically attack whatever's in there, okay? This also works when it comes to CSing, right? So I can do attack move right here and Darius will attack whatever is like closest to his range, right? Attack move is basically just like go, like walk until you find something to attack. That is basically the command, right? It's kind of like how minions do things, right? So. Let's say I put a enemy dummy down here. Attack move. He's gonna walk until he finds something that's the closest to him to attack, right? Now, there is another way to tweak this to make it so that it attack moves on cursor. What does this mean, okay? Now, attack move has two types of priorities, okay? That you can toggle between. Attack the target that's closest to you or the target that's closest to your cursor, okay? So when I set it to, to like attack closest to my cursor, I have to basically put my cursor near the target I want to attack. So although this is the closest to me, okay, also, by the way, disable auto attack. Like I, I, I wanted to save that for like last when I got to that section, but man, is it so annoying. I can't believe people play with that, but definitely disable auto attack. Okay. So yeah, um, back to what we were doing. Let's just try down Grump because the minions are pushing and I don't want to get hit by turret shots. So, um, Two targets, right? One of them is closer to me, one of them is further from me. With attack move on cursor, you can pick which of the targets you want to attack. Right? Well, I guess that didn't work. Wait. Okay, now that they're attacking me. There we go, right? Because like by default, the jungle camps are at least set as your enemies, right? They're neutral. So yeah. On cursor, I can basically pick who I want Darius to attack. It's essentially like a different way of clicking on characters to attack without really like clicking on them. This is kind of useful in kite situations as if you're like an ADC or something, or in situations where you're walking into the bush to fight someone, but it's really messy when you're working with minions, okay? Because minions are counted as enemies. So when you're in lane in an all-in like that, make sure you're very careful with how you attack move because your character can accidentally just attack minions, okay? So be very careful where you click. <clears throat> so yeah, that is the attack move. Um, the pet thing, I don't think it's like, 
you just hold alt and you right click for your pet i don't think i need to cover that too much camera control now this is very very important most players especially beginner players play with camera lock right and this is not exactly the best idea why now while camera lock does make it so that you see your champion all the time what it does do is it makes it difficult for you to like move your camera and scout for information let's say i'm trying to look for baron here i have to basically hold my mouse here and constantly just look around and i can't do both the scouting and controlling my champion at the same time okay so if i have the camera lock off right it's off i can both right click and move and see what's up right i can both scout and move my character but when it's locked you're kind of stuck right here you can't look around you have to basically like you know all you can do the only place you can move is right where you're looking you have to hold the map to look at it and that's just not good because generally speaking if your mouse has to be somewhere on a screen then it is not good okay you want your mouse to be as free as possible so that you can react to things same with like clicking to level up your abilities. If your mouse has to go down there to click an ability, that's basically a solid few seconds where you're not doing anything, that you're weakened and you can be caught off guard and killed in. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're not playing on center screen most of the time, right? Most of your time when you're laning, when you're like, you know, just roaming around, you want it to be unlocked. So you can basically look around the map and get as much information as possible. Just get used to moving the camera with the mouse. Now, this can be quite annoying. I do get that, which is why we use this uh, bind, okay? Center camera on champion. So my personal bind is X. You can have it on space bar. It's up to you. But what this does is when you hold it, it centers the camera. So let's say I'm trying to like scout the fight here. Let's just put some dummies down. Boom, boom, right? I'm, oh, oh, they're right here. Then I move up here. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and like, you know, I, I find I scout the fight, right? But now that it's time for the f action, I, I press the my bind. And now I can basically just keep in the into the combat. If you're a person who doesn't like to move the screen in the middle of the fight, then you can use this to basically keep the camera on Darius. And I myself do this all the time because sometimes I'd rather just react to the enemy's movements than move the camera, right? So this is very, very useful. If you're in the very, very busy fight, hold X and then just, you know, um, center the camera. But holding the button can be an annoyance sometimes, so you can also do toggle camera lock. And this is basically the same exact thing. Wait, this is basically the same exact thing, except you're just like pressing it once. Okay, toggle. So just your preference, you want to hold, bind this, you want to toggle, bind that, it's up to you. My personal preference is with hold so that I can actually just um, control better. Come on, there we go. Okay, um, there's not much to do here either. Display, um, we don't really need to like do anything here. The only thing you have to be aware of here is just control F, which is to show the FPS on the uh, ping, just control F. Jesus. Okay, there you go. And it just disables and enables it. So if you don't have this enabled for some reason, just make sure it's on so that you know how your system is performing. Communication. This is basically just preference, right? Like the default things of like, you know, that ping, that ping, and then just holding alt and moving your mouse for the wheel. These are good enough, right? Like, you don't even need to change around the pings too much. And there's also the emote wheel, which is on T. I don't use this at all, so I have it unbounded, but you can just bind it to whatever you want, okay? So yeah, the rest of these are just self-explanatory, the jokes and stuff. Okay, the menu, nothing needed here. Item shop, nothing needed here. Practice tool, this is not really anything useful, right? Unless you're a person who's in practice tool a lot, you can just, you know, make use of these buttons. And yeah, now there is something that like the basic idea with the options. One of the th one of the rules here is you can't bind anything to left click. OK, nothing can be bound to left click. So if I try to I'll left click, right, it's not going to bind anything to that button. But if I click right click, it's going to bind it to that. OK, so it only binds like on left click when you enable this ability and it only binds attack move. OK, so this way. You basically have your left click to attack move, so you can basically be like, you know, 
attacking with left click, right? This is basically only useful for like ADCs, so that you can basically just, you know, um, let's say, uh, attack, move, attack, move, right? It, it helps a lot with kiting, okay? So if you're an ADC player or you play mainly ranged champions who have to kite a lot, then this might not be the worst thing in the world. Just bind the attack move to work on whoever's closer to your cursor and you can be like, you know, like a, like a goose vein, you know? Do, 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 do. But for most players, it's better to keep it as normal left click so they can click on targets and check out their stats or whatever, right? But that is basically it for the hotkey section. Let me just... Uh, Camera control, center camera on Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so now let's get to the video. This part does not really matter at all. It is purely, purely, purely preference. You basically just wanna set settings where your game is running as smoothly as possible. Now this is all dependent on your PC, okay? If your PC is not very good, then you might wanna set all these settings to very low, okay? But if your PC can handle higher settings, then you can, you know, Scroll this slider to the right and get whatever look you want out of the game. Now, keep in mind, okay, League of, League of Legends has horrible graphics, okay? League graphics suck, right? They absolutely suck. So, don't really care about having good graphics in this game, right? It really doesn't matter. And <clears throat> one thing super important, turn shadows off. Shadows are quite annoying because they can really help mess with the silhouette of the champion, okay? They really do just mess with how champions and creatures look okay so you want to make sure shadows are off completely all right so yeah as for accessibility these are just things that like you know help you see things better so if you want more you know contrast or whatever you can set things up here maybe your monitor requires something whatever right you can set them all up right there okay sound now sound is also another purely preference thing but generally speaking you want the voice effects and the sound effects higher than everything else, okay? Why? We, as humans, react to our ears first and then our eyes, okay? You react to the sounds you hear the fastest, okay? So, if you hear that someone, like, let's say Yasuo's third cue, he hits the second cue and then his whirlwind sounds coming up, okay? Then you hear that and then you can actually react to it, okay? You have to be able to, like, React abilities based off of sounds because every single ability in the game has its own specific sound that it makes, okay? And to make these stand out, you gotta make sure that the sound effects are really high. And some champions, you know, have a voice effect like, oh, I'm gonna crush you or something stupid like that. So voice effects are also good to have high. And aside from that, pings are a good thing to have high if you wanna communicate with your team, right? To me, I don't have pings too loud because I honestly hate the sounds of them, but you know, sometimes if you wanna be a good little team player, they're good to have, okay? So your massive volume is basically how you control your volume. Let me just, right? Jesus. Okay, so you basically want your volumes to be in this kind of like format. High voice, high sound, and high pings. And the, just control your general volume with your master. Most people I know have the music volume turned off, but because we're doing a YouTube video and I CBA putting like, you know, <laughs> uncopyrighted music to this video, I'm just gonna have it on because uncopyrighted music sucks. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's just go into the interface. This is a lot of preference, but also a lot of good stuff are in here too. So let's just get right into it. First off, HUD scale. HUD scale is basically how big your heads up display is, and that is just like this part, and also like um, this basically, right? So you wanna make sure that this is at the size where you can see all of it, but when it's at 100%, look at how massive this is. This is taking up a solid chunk of the screen, okay? So you wanna make sure that it's small enough to the point where you can just see it, okay? We're not gonna interact with our like, heads up display ever, okay? We're not gonna click on it ever. So it doesn't matter how small it is, it's just there for information, okay? So, as long as you don't have any eye problems, like you need glasses or whatever, just have it small, or you have a small monitor, but yeah, like something tiny like this should be good enough. And by the way, speaking of the heads up display, try to make sure that your champion info is unlocked right here, okay? You can basically click these three things for champion info, stats, runes, and eternals, right? And eternals are worthless. 
runes aren't really helpful because you can't really do anything about your runes but your stats basically help you keep an eye out for what you have and what you don't have so that is very very useful right there now aside from that cursor scale this is just preference i personally like to have big cursors right I want to just basically see exactly where I'm pointing, so big cursors are better. Shop scale doesn't really matter. Chat scale, it should be zero. Ideally, chat is not very useful, but it is your personal preference, how big you want it. Minimap scale, now, it depends on the player, but if you're a lower rank player, you should have the minimap be kind of big, right? I'd say around 60 to 70 is perfect because this at this point, it's kind of big to the point where you can actually avoid it and you can very comfortably tell comfortably tell who's where right now i have seen people who have the minimap like 100 or even larger through like modding the game or something but i think that's a bit um silly because when the minimap is this massive you're literally covering up like a big chunk of the screen by just this massive block so i'd rather have it be around here ish where you know it's a bit more modest and you can actually see your damn screen these two don't matter here hot animations don't matter this is preference these are all preference right um legacy cursor this basically just makes the cursor like the old glove like back in the old days it doesn't really change anything except your mechanics getting a little bit better <laughs> jake, jake, jake. but it's just preference whether you want the the pointer or the handy dandy old glove right so yeah tooltips you want to make sure that this is enabled because what it is is basically um by default it's like the abilities are like this. Okay, you have to press shift to get all the stats and all the math. You just want that to show by default. So enable that so you can see all the stats at once. Here, you want to enable show spell costs so that you can see the mana cost of all the spells so you can better plan your all-ins. Um, this is preference. This is preference. By default, you should have both chats turned off. Chat is like completely worthless and you don't really need it. Enable timestamps though, because like, as you can see, there are no timestamps, but if I say um, top lane flash down, oh, I have, <laughs> that was a bad example. Top lane flash down, or I just ping like Darius ghost, right? And I can see the times like time uh, timestamp. So I'm like, okay, flash. Uh, okay, ghost, it's up in three minutes, so I have until 35 minutes to kill this guy now that he has ghost down, okay? That's the kind of thing that you kind of want to do with the time steps. Quick maths. As for here, you want to make sure that all of these are enabled, especially, especially you want to make sure that the experience is enabled because when you are basically in a bad matchup, you're kind of in a position where you want to just get, like, whatever CS you can, and you want it to show up whether you get CS or not, but if you stand, like, really far back right you still want the cssb to like get to you whereas if you have this off you basically won't know whether like you know you're getting xp or not unless you directly look at this bar and the longer your eyes are off the center of the screen where your champion is the more difficult you're making it for yourself because you're basically leaving yourself open to being randomly all in and killed okay we enable that and now we're at the game settings, the last stuff. This is all purely preference, but I basically talked about everything here. Let's just go through it one more time. <laughs> Auto attack is the worst setting in the entire game. What it basically does is it just like makes your champion attack whatever's next to them that's attackable without even clicking on them. And this is so horrible because this makes wave control impossible. Okay, with auto attack enabled, you cannot do wave control. Right. And if you're a support, you're just going to be destroying your like ADC CS too. So make sure that this is disabled. OK, make sure it's disabled first thing into the game. Move of prediction. Move of prediction is basically like you basically see on your screen how the game would be if you were playing on zero ping. Right. If you're playing on zero ping, that's how the game would be. Now, it's kind of jittery like this because the ping is quite high. And that's kind of how it is, you know, um, when the game is trying to show you how it would be on zero ping, but the actual game is like 120 MS 
back, then there is this quite like horrible jitteriness that makes the game basically like quite annoying to play. Movement prediction is only useful when you're on very low ping because then it can make the game a, like feel a bit faster to play. And a lot of professionals play on movement prediction because they play on LAN, right? And when you play on LAN or like places with hyper hyper good internet where there's like 10 ping or so, then it's basically as close to movement prediction as it gets, right? So if you see some professional play on it, then sure. But I think for most people, it's more practical to play on like with movement prediction off. Attack move on cursor and three target champions only as a toggle are things I both discussed. So yeah, I discussed it with those things. And uh, there's one more thing I wanted to see if I can. Uh... There's one more settings that I want to open, basically. Let's see. Advanced player stats. There we go. Okay. I forgot about this. But basically, you want to. I put this on V. But what this does, I, I'm not sure if you guys can see it because my um, my camera's gonna block it. But it basically shows all of your stats. Let me just uh, make the HUD small. As you guys can see, it basically shows like all the other stats, like attack range, tenacity, life steal, armor pen, everything. Okay, you want to make sure that this is a key. That is, this is binded to a key that isn't too intrusive. That is like kind of just there that you can hold it and you can basically just look at your stats to see what you have, what you don't have, right? But yeah. One last thing I also forgot to mention is the colorblind mode. Now, the reason why a lot of players who aren't colorblind turn on colorblind mode is that it makes some abilities in the game appear a bit more clear, okay? So many of the colors in the game are really messed up, and when you're playing it on the normal mode, it really just blends into each other. So like things like a like singe trail or something, or some other like abilities, are really sometimes difficult to pick out from the background. But when you enable colorblind mode, it makes sure that all the abilities are crystal clear, crystal clear, and super easy to pick out. So most players who have gone through their settings and configured them have colorblind mode turned on. So yeah, that's the last thing that I had to mention that I forgot about, but yeah. This is pretty much it for basically every single setting in the game. I'll see you guys in the next one, and yeah, peace out. <laughs>